Pete Davidson Googles himself. He's flooded by a bunch of unflattering articles. To lift his spirits, he takes a visit to the hub. I gotta say, virtual reality done took things to another level. However, doing that while your mom is downstairs is also another level, a lower level. Pete's mom enters his room and gets a surprise. Pete meets up with his granddad. He complains about not being taken seriously. His granddad kicks him a little wisdom. He coughs up blood or ketchup. He tells Pete that he's dying. If you gotta go, you gotta go. As his time is running out, he wants to spend more time with Pete. Pete thinks up what would make his granddad happy, so he hires an escort. He picks up granddad for a boys' night out. Granddad has also invited Uncle Roy, which Pete doesn't seem to be too pleased about. At the bar, the guys are joined by the escort. Granddad makes a point to Pete that he doesn't need any help getting a piece of ass. Well, since it's already paid for, the party moves up to the Sinatra suite. Also, since it's already paid for, Uncle Roy partakes in the escort service. He throws his back out in the process, but he still wants to get that nut. Granddad encourages Pete to help old Roy out. Pete pushes Roy back and forth in bed. I'm pretty sure you can't get any kind of thrust that way. Anyway, a strange threesome to say the least. Moms drives little Pete and his sister past the NYC 9-11 site shortly after the event. They're on their way to Pete's auntie's wedding. Little Pete's comedic efforts have no pause button as he interrupts the wedding proceedings. We meet the groom, Uncle Tommy, a major influence in Peter's life. Pete and Uncle Tommy meet up in a cafe and talk about day-to-day -day problems. We flash back to the wedding day as Pete sees Uncle Tommy doing coke. Tommy tells him, do as I say, not as I do. Pete lost his dad on 9-11, so you have people coming up to him trying to make sense of the tragedy. On a cigarette slash alcohol slash cocaine run, Uncle Tommy reminds little Pete again, do as I say, not as I do. Back at the wedding, little Pete wants the DJ to play his favorite song. The DJ brushes him off until Uncle Tommy makes it clear that what little Pete wants, he gets. Back to the present. Pete lets Uncle Tommy take his new car for a spin. Tommy pushes it to its top speed. Just a little thrill for an over the hill guy who wants to experience the thrill a minute. He tells Pete that he still gets the urge to go crazy and he understands what Pete is going through now. Pete's mom gets an alert on her phone that Pete has died in a car accident. She tries to reach him, but he's not answering. Pete's okay. He wakes up in a hotel room. His phone battery has died because his charger is kaput. He goes down to the hotel desk to borrow a charger. The workers are either seeing a ghost or the internet news is bullshit. As Pete's phone wakes up, he gets a barrage of messages and notifications. He asks the workers if he's dead. Pete's mom tells his manager that he has to do a better job with Pete. Pete's more upset with the photos being used in his death rumor than the actual death rumor itself. As quick as his team can get the photos removed, someone else is reposting them. His psychiatrist even can't get him to stop talking about the photo so that he can discuss some real issues. Pete and his mom find out the source of the photos. Turns out, it's his psychiatrist. Pete fires him. The psychiatrist bullshits Pete into believing that he was doing it for Pete's own good. He tells Pete he needs to focus on important things like family instead of small shit like that photo. Pete unfires him. Pete meets back with his mom and tells her that hanging out with her was the most fun he's had in a while. For reference, all that I know about Pete Davidson is a few skits from SNL plus some tabloid stories. He 
He seems to be a naturally funny person who never really tried to act. He was just being himself. And that's what he's doing here, being himself. So if you like Pete from SNL, you're gonna like this too. Now, while Pete isn't doing much acting, he's surrounding himself with some very good actors, mainly Joe Pesci and Edie Falco. I had forgotten just how good Joe Pesci was. I didn't expect to laugh a minute type program, and that's not what this is. The show doesn't follow any real structure. It kind of reminds me of Master of None on Netflix. The show's a good counterbalance after you've watched something really heavy. That's probably how I watch it. It's not bad, but it's not something that I'd put at the top of my list. I'll probably watch all of them, but for right now, at this very moment, I'm out.